The Morvich theorem in solving polynomial equations. All right, so we want to look at uh, the same application of the Morvich to solve polynomial equation using the Morvich theorem to solve polynomial equation. Now, before we can do this, we realize that complex equations in the form of a polynomial must first be solved for z. That's for the complex number in a similar fashion to the method of finding the roots of the real of the polynomial equation. So what happens is that in the previous videos we've done, we've learned how to find or solve um, the uh, using the Morvich to find the end truth of what of unity or of equations. So I guess you you have to go look at those concepts before we come here and we deal with it. Yeah. And in the videos we realized that we said if you have that n which is equal to one, then to find it we rewrite the equation to see the fact that e exponent to i k pi all divided by what n that is when we want to find the uh, the n truth of the unity and this becomes our solution and when this is our solution the k we have here should be what an integer that will probably start from 0 1 2 to n minus 1 sorry n minus 1 for all values of what of the k and this is what we established earlier on all right Okay, so with that, we want to look at a typical question. We want to look at a typical question, a typical equation, and how we use the Demarbury to solve that equation. So the question is to solve the equation z6 minus z5 plus 4z exponent 4 minus 6z exponent 3 plus 2z squared minus 8z plus 8 equal to 0. Take note, um, after this video, there will be one last video on complex number. And after that, we solve some questions, a whole lot of questions. So I'll personally make a video for all the questions on complex number. So it will, make you, it will give you a whole lot of questions and you see how you can do it. So this is the equation. And the highest um, uh, degree for this equation is what? Degree 6. And they are all complex numbers with imaginary and real power. But I think at the end of this equation, we have to find what how many solutions. We have to find six solutions because the highest degree here, Zn, is what? The highest degree of the n here is what? It's six. So we need what? How many solutions? Six solutions. We need what? Six solutions. All right. So let's look at how we, we do about this. First of all, we can do some little factorization to break down this equation into the key root. So when we take the constant here, it's 8. So if you find the factors of the constant h here, it's 1, 2, and 4. And it's, it's 3. It's only 3 values. So if the constant h here is 1, 2, and 4, then we can rewrite our equation as z cube minus 2 z cubed minus 2 multiplying z squared plus 4 multiplying z minus 1 is equal to what? Is 0. So if this is the factor of 8, the factor of 8, and you, you rewrite the equation this way, when you multiply, you will come back to get this. When you multiply, you will come back what? To get this. Okay. So now what happens is that. Um, yeah, it's very simple. Z minus 1 is equal to 0. So now we can just see that our Z minus Z cube minus 2 is equal to 0. Our Z squared plus 4 is equal to 0. And our Z minus 1 is also equal to 0. All right. So these are the three equations we are having here. These are the three equations we are having here. Okay, so now from these three equations, from now from these three equations, we can say, so let's say this one, this is two, this is three. You can say z cube is equal to what? Is equal to two. So taking only this equation into consideration, how many solutions should you have here in finding the end truth? You can must have what? Three solutions. You must have three solutions. But before that, 
from this equation, from the third equation, you can have z equal to 1. From the second equation, you can have z is equal to plus or minus what? 2. Plus or minus what? 2. So these are some of what? The solutions in the whole of what? This equation. So this one alone, we have to get the three solutions over here. We have to get the three solutions over here. All right. So now I'm getting the three solutions here. We need our Z1, we need our Z2, and we need our, our Z34. This particular key solution. Okay. And now we said, if we have Z exponent 1, which is equal to unity, then we can say the Z exponent 1 is equal to the exponent of um, 2i k pi all divided by n. In finding the, um, what do you call in finding the nth root of what? Of the equation. In finding the nth root of what? Of the equation. So now since this is um, since this is that, we can say that the equation that Q is 2 times 1. 2 multiplying 1. Alright, so if the equation is 2 multiplying unity, which is the same as 2, then we can say Z3 is now equal to 2, the cube root of what? Of the 2 Sorry, the cube root of the 2 and what? The cube root of what? Of the 1. Now, anytime you have an equation, a complex number equation to unity, this is how we find the end root. So the z cube now becomes our 2, 1 on 3, e. That's when z n is equal to what? It's equal to 1. It is e exponent what? 2i k pi all on what? All on 3. Because our n value is what? It's 3. Please do get it. Okay, so now when you get this, because the whole of this is assuming that the whole of this should give you what? 1 or what? On that. Alright, so now that is to say, you have, that is why in the previous video I had you to put something. When you have some z for is equal to 2, 2i two pi, I said it's the same as 1. I asked you to go and prove it. I get this. So that is the same thing here. So the whole of this stuff here will give you the 1. Okay. So now we need the three solutions here. We need the three solutions here. So let me slide this out. We need the three solutions. So from z cube is equal to 2 1 3, 2 exponent 1 over 3, e exponent 2i k pi on 3. So now from here we need three solutions. We need our z1, we need our z2, and we need our z3 as the solutions. Okay, so now to get this, what happens is that our z1 from this equation, and we are doing this because we want to avoid the duplication of solutions. We want to avoid the duplication of solutions in the eigen. Okay, so we are doing this because we want to avoid duplication of solutions in the range of negative pi, which is less than the argument of the complex number, less than or equal to the negative of what? Of the pi. So we want to avoid. Um, the solution in this that that's why we want to avoid specifically the duplication of solutions you get because we have we need six solutions and this one is only given as three solutions so we have to avoid the duplication of what of solutions and at the end we get all our three solutions okay so now from here our z1 our z1 here will give us what uh, that is when n is equal to zero sorry when k is equal to zero. So our z1 always is when our k is equal to zero. So if our k is equal to zero, our z1 now becomes 2 exponent 1 there. E was 2i 0 pi all on 3. And you know this little thing will give you what? 2 exponent 1 third e 0 i. And e exponent 0, you know my exponent 0 is 1. Which will give what? 2 1 on 3. And this is our first value. This is our first value. Which is what? Z1, our first value, which is what? Z1. Now, the second solution, Z2, the second solution, Z2, will now become, the second solution, Z2, will now become 2, that's when K is equal to 1. So, you get 2, 1, 10, E exponent, 2I, K pi, all on 3. And when you do this, you'll be getting 2 exponent, 1 on 3, E, 2I, 1 pi, 5 on 3. And this solution, we want to expand this solution 
I did the same as 2 exponent 1 on 3. 1 on 3, that is multiplied to negative half plus root 3 on 2i. That is, we want to expand this function, the exponent of this, to give it this value. So, your negative half plus root 3 on 2. So, you can use your calculator to check all these things. All right. Now, the third solution, which is z3, is also when k is equal to 2. You get 2 on 3, 2 is 1 on 3, e 2i. 2 pi on 3 and that will give you 2 exponent 1 on 3 e 4 i pi on 3 and you're going to point this on your calculator you'll be getting this solution 2 exponent 1 on 3 negative half minus root of 3 on 2 i all right so now this is our first solution our second solution our third solution so we are done. We've gotten our three solutions from this equation. Now, the other three solutions can be found here in this solution and this one solution. So now, other three solutions, we have our z4 to what? 2i. We have our z5 to what? Minus 2i. Because this solution gives us what? Plus or minus what? Minus 2. I get it. So the plus or minus 2, because it was under root, when we extend it, z squared is equal to what? Negative 4. So if the z square here is equal to negative 4, then we can say root of the z square is equal to the root of what? Negative 4. And root of negative 4 here, z will now become root of negative 4 there, will become, can be, that is root of 4 times negative 1. Are you getting it? Okay, so that is z is equal to 2 times root of what? Negative 1. So our z here was what? Sorry, yes, so i is here. So that I give you plus or negative what? 2i. Because i is always what? Negative 1. Okay, so that one, the z4 now take the plus 2i and the z5 we take minus 2i. So the last solution, which is the z6, that is the solution we got from here. And that is what? That is 1. So now this all becomes the solution of the equation that was given as z6, as z6. Minus x5 plus 4z4 minus 6z3 plus 2z squared minus 8z plus 8 equals to 0. That complex equation, that polynomial equation, this is how we use the Morbis concept to solve the polynomial equation. I hope you will get a whole lot of questions during the next session. Thank you very much.